Welcome, I'm Dr. Janine Byring, naturopathic doctor, and today I'm sharing what you need to know about intestinal parasites or worms. So yeah, if you're squeamish, then this is not for you, but it's great information, so don't go anywhere. Let's go through some of the most common intestinal parasites. So when we take a look at roundworms, so roundworms are very common, about one billion people worldwide right now have roundworms, and they can be very small, but they can grow up to a meter in length. So they can be as small as just one millimeter, but can grow up to a meter in length. And they are typically found in organic foods, so fruits and vegetables. Yes, I know, you may not have known that. Also in manure and in soil, so if you're outside a lot, maybe you work on a farm. Also in undercooked meat, and sushi is notorious for picking up these roundworms. Some of the symptoms may be itchiness in the body, especially an itchy anus, and this is really common with one of the most common types of roundworms, which is pinworms. Now, one of the common roundworms as well is called the hookworm. So the hookworm, which we can see here, you can get these from walking barefoot outside. As much as I love grounding, we have to still do that, but just being cautious as to where we're actually walking because these can be picked up through the skin, get into the lungs and hook onto the intestinal walls. And we can see basically those fangs in the picture and they hook on and they don't want to let go and they can actually rob us of our energy levels because they will consume our iron. So people who have a chronic low iron level can be victim to these hookworms. They can cause abdominal pains, some itching as well, a cough, certainly if this is in the lungs and some skin rashes as well. But the scary thing about this is that you can be completely asymptomatic and not really know that you have the hookworms unless it's been investigated. Now, another type of parasite is the fluke. So these can be found in the liver, in the blood, and in the brain. And these can be picked up in, again, fruits and vegetables, also found in drinking water, in sushi, and undercooked fish. So if you do have flukes, you may be completely, again, asymptomatic. But the scary thing about the flukes is that they actually have their own stem cells and they can regenerate themselves. Also, these are linked in researchers have found the link with the flukes to cancer. So it's something definitely that should be investigated if there are some of these, you know, symptoms of having parasites in general. Also tapeworms. Now the tapeworms, <laughs> this one can grow up to six meters in length. So 20 to 50 feet long. I know it's crazy. You may have seen pictures before, not the nicest thing to always look at. And they can live in you for up to 25 years or even more. And the problem with the tapeworm, if you look at the head part, is that this can, it's like a suction cup and can attach to the intestinal wall. And they can have 3,000 different segments. So the reason why it's called a tapeworm is because it's quite thin and it looks like a piece of tape. And each of those segments can lay thousands of eggs. So this one is notorious, again, of robbing you of your energy chronic low energy and also having low vitamin B12 levels is related to this common parasite. And another one is the protozoa. So Giardia is a type of protozoa that causes diarrhea. And it's one of the most common ones found in Canada. And this bypasses chlorinated drinking water because its outer shell survives that chlorine. So it's also has been found in pre-washed lettuce. And it was first discovered as beaver fever in Canada in the Rockies years ago. So this is something that yes, you can pick it up even on your day-to-day -day ingestion of your healthy foods like salads. So cyclospora is a type of protozoa. And this has been found in salads, in basil, cilantro, raspberries, blackberries, snow peas, and even snap peas. So definitely you want to do your best, you know, to don't be paranoid about picking up parasites, but always do your best to get rid of parasites and do a regular parasite cleanse with some important herbal medicines. We'll share some links below if you want some more information about that. But doing that, I mean, personally, I do it at least three, four times a year to make sure that I'm always one step ahead of 
with those parasites in case I have picked up any of them. And it really does go a long way for a good and healthy digestion and making sure that your energy levels are where they should be. So I hope that you learned something new. Please be sure to share this video with someone who you know who will benefit from this information. And let me know in the comments below, did I freak you out? <laughs> I wanna know what you're thinking or if you've got more questions about parasites. Also, be sure to give me a big thumbs up. I truly appreciate all of your positive feedback. And if you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you subscribe and you turn on those notifications by clicking that bell so you always get my newest and latest uploads. And remember to always take good care of your health and do it naturally. Thanks for watching today.